Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And we start with the latest in a murder trial. Right now, Edison Caraman's fate is in the hands of the jury. Kataman is on trial for the 2020 shooting death of his cousin, Christopher Kataman. The jury began deliberating a little after 10 a.m. this morning. They could find him guilty of murder or a lesser charge of manslaughter. If he is found guilty of murder, he faces five to 99 years or life in prison. We will have the latest on KSET.com when a verdict is reached. New at noon, fire crews say an RV was so badly damaged, it was hard to tell how the flames even started. According to the San Antonio Fire Department, the fire was raging when they got to the scene on the west side. They were called to the 200 block of South San Eduardo Avenue around 8 this morning. This is near South General McMullen Street and West Commerce Drive. Crews tell us the RV was in a fenced off lot that firefighters believe belongs to the people on the property adjacent to it. They say someone lives inside that RV, but fortunately no one was there this morning when that fire got going. The fire did not spread either. And take a look at this. A massive fire this morning in Austin. It forced several dozen people out onto the streets. These images posted on one of the Austin Fire Department's Twitter accounts. 30 people were displaced after these flames broke out at the apartment building in North Austin. According to KTBC in Austin, four people were taken to the hospital. And so far, crews think the fire broke out on the second floor of the building, but still not too sure why. Outside with live cam, first of the week was beautiful. Then yesterday things changed and now it's cloudy and cold. It is. Uh, we got down close to freezing last night uh, here in San Antonio. Then the clouds rolled in and that is kind of locked in those cold temperatures. You look outside, looks like a January winter day, right? Uh, it's going to be a chilly day, that's for sure. We're still carrying some wind chills, too, so it's going to be jacket weather all day long. Let's look at the satellite picture and it tells a story here. Those clouds have surged in here and uh, they probably won't break up very much. We'll see maybe a few peaks of sun and that's about it, especially out west. If you're around Del Rio, the sun is out at least for now, but here in San Antonio, it's going to be a fairly gray day. And as we look at the numbers, 40 degrees at the airport, 40 Boulevardi, 40 Canyon Lake, 40 in New Braunfels. That's a common number, 41 Bandera, 40 right now in Divine. And we'll probably gain a few more degrees before it's all said and done this afternoon. You factor in what wind there is, and there isn't much, but wind chills are down in the 30s in a few spots. So just heads up, winds are generally pretty light. Our forecast today, We'll get up to about 45 degrees and we'll probably hold steady there into the evening. Moisture starts to surge in tonight and that may actually allow temperatures to come up a bit overnight and into tomorrow morning. It will also lead to some drizzle, some fog and maybe a few light showers. We're going to talk more about that forecast, your weekend forecast, which includes another front coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. The medical examiner is still working to identify a man who died after being run over by not one, but two cars on a west side highway. San Antonio police that said, say that man was a pedestrian attempting to cross Loop 410 near Calabria when he was hit. Katrina Weber has the story from the scene and tells us police are calling this an accident. Based on what San Antonio police told us, it appears they believe that these drivers did everything right. They say they both stopped after the crash and there was no sign of intoxication. Police say both of them were traveling east on Loop 410 near Culebra Road when a man ran out into their path just before 930 last night. They say he was hit first by a sedan, then a Dodge Charger. Although the driver stopped and tried to help, there was nothing anyone could do to save him. He died of his injuries. The two drivers were not hurt in the crash. Police had that side of the highway shut down for several hours after the crash while they investigated. But again, they say it doesn't look like there will be any charges brought against those drivers. Reporting from the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to the latest on the COVID-19 surge. It's forcing event organizers to rethink some of their plans. Here in San Antonio, the MLK Commission Board decided it will cancel the annual March part of the events. That pre-March event also canceled. However, some activities surrounding the March may still happen. The board is going to be making those decisions during a meeting next Monday. 
Metro Health opened another COVID-19 testing site today. It's the second of three sites which were announced yesterday. This location is at Palo Alto College. Yesterday, the city opened a testing site at the Alamo College District building open to the public. The third site opens on Monday, and that'll be at St. Phillips College. No appointment will be necessary at any of these sites, and testing will be done on a walk-up basis only. The tests are free. It should take about 24 hours to get results. The sites are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. Today, the Supreme Court taking up two major Biden administration efforts meant to bump up the nation's vaccination rate against COVID-19. It is deliberating at a time of spiking cases. The justices are hearing the arguments right now on whether to allow the administration to enforce a vaccine or testing requirement that applies to employers with 100 or more workers. They're also hearing arguments on a separate vaccine mandate for most health care workers. The White House says it is confident in its legal authority on these policies, but some states are questioning whether the feds have that power over private business. Still, President Biden maintains COVID is not here to stay. No, I don't think COVID is here to stay. That having COVID in the environment here and in the world is probably here to stay. But COVID, as we're dealing with it now, is not here to stay. The new normal doesn't have to be. We have so many more tools we're developing. And, can and here's where he's coming from. Six of President Biden's former advisors now calling on the president to adopt an entirely new pandemic strategy, one that focuses on the new normal of living with the virus rather than trying to wipe it out. After a lot of hard work, some local students are getting a chance to show off a little bit at the annual Northeast Ag Fair. Still ahead, Tiffany Huertas explains how this event could be a stepping stone to even bigger opportunities. And also still ahead, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich reaches another coaching milestone. Larry Mears will have that for you coming up in sports. Three men convicted of the death of Ahmad Arbery are now awaiting their sentencing. We'll have the latest on that after the break. In Brunswick, Georgia, a sentencing underway for the three men convicted in the murder of Ahmad Arbery. They're all facing a minimum of life in prison for chasing and shooting Arbery, an unarmed black man who was out jogging back in 2020. ABC's Alwyn Lopez has more forward from Georgia. Sentencing was noticed for today. The three men convicted in the murder of Ahmad Arbery yeah, are learning right. their fate in a Brunswick, Georgia courtroom today. I just want to say thank you all for standing with us to get, fight, get justice for Ahmad. I really don't have much to say this morning, but the day has finally come yes. that we will get justice for Quest. Travis McMichael, who fired the gun, his father Gregory McMichael, a former police officer, and their neighbor William Rody Bryant, who recorded the shooting on his cell phone, all facing life in prison. Each of them allowed to present additional evidence and call character witnesses as they argue for the judge's mercy, hoping they'll be eligible for parole. 25-year-old Amon Aubrey was jogging unarmed in February 2020 when he was killed. Prosecutors convincing jurors he was targeted by those men because he was black. The case sparking national outrage after this cell phone video became public. In it, we see Arbery's final moments. Jurors deliberated for just about 11 hours, delivering guilty verdicts the day before Thanksgiving. Guilty. Arbery's mother crying Count tears five. of relief as Don't the verdict more. was read. Outside the courtroom, an explosion of cheers and chants. All three men still face federal charges on civil rights violations, and that case begins next month. Owen Lopez, ABC News, Atlanta. Outside with live cam, it, it's cold. I don't know what happened, but earlier this week it was beautiful. Now it's cold. It's cloudy. It looks like winter time. That's what it is. It's winter. I mean, that's okay. that's. Well, it looks like it. <laughs> it does. It feels like. It. It is one of those days. Tomorrow's going to be cloudy, too. Maybe a little bit warmer, though, uh, to start your weekend. We'll get some sun back in the forecast on Sunday. As you look at the aquifer, it's down three-tenths of a foot, 662.6. We could use some rain. There is finally some 
maybe a significant rain in the forecast. We'll talk about that coming up. And in your pollen count, Mount of Cedar is in the high category, 5,740. Those winds yesterday helped to kick it up some. Molds are uh, moderate, actually, at 930. We'll talk more about your weekend forecast coming up. For months, students who are part of the AgriScience Magnet Program at Madison High School have been raising animals, and finally, they'll be able to showcase them at the annual Northeast Ag Fair. The two-day event kicks off the day from a livestock exhibition to a barbecue cook-off. Tiffany Ware just has a look at what it took for those students to get there. Philip is like a puppy dog. He just loves everybody, loves attention. He loves scratches. Margot's really shy and timid, but she's still super sweet. Rhiannon Bullpen is one of the students competing in this year's Northeast Ag Fair. Everybody in our barns are always excited for these shows because we get a chance to win ribbons and buckles and sometimes even money. Rhiannon will be showing goats she's had since June. And it takes a lot of hard work being here every early morning and in the evenings. They've learned responsibility teamwork, um, time management. This Ag Fair helps prepare students for bigger shows like the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Student Tori Mulberly will be competing in the annual Ag Fair and at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. I'm really excited. I've grown up watching the San Antonio Stock Show, so it's just my dream come true. So I showed as part of the San Antonio Livestock Show um, and earned a scholarship uh, back in 1993 from the San Antonio Livestock Show, and that helped to pay for my college. The Ag Fair is also preparing students for their future careers in this field. So I want to become an Ag teacher. Tiffany okay. Huertas, KSET 12 News. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> Didn't take long to raise those goats. No. And freezing outside. It Just is. freezing. We actually had pipes burst No, Did this really? week. Did you really? really? It Where? was enough. At your house? Yes. Wow. Well, yeah, we did have some freezing temperatures early this week. This morning, we just we touched freezing. We got down to 32 here in town. There were a few places up in the hill country that did get fairly cold. And then the clouds moved in and kind of locked in the cold, uh, the, what we're feeling today. These were the numbers this morning. 32 here in San Antonio, 28 Bernie Stage, 24 in Kerrville, 31 in New Braunfels. And as we zoom out some, Places like Fredericksburg got all the way down to 21. That's because we saw clear skies most of the night. That is until about 4 a.m. Then these clouds rolled in, and again, it's sort of locked in the cold air here across South Texas right now. Cloudy skies here around San Antonio. A few breaks as you get out west, maybe around Uvalde, Del Rio, you've seen some sun. One of the few spots, but look what it's doing for your temperature. 54 degrees there. Sun is helping a lot here in San Antonio. We're stuck at 40, and I don't imagine we're going to rise much more than that just because these clouds are going to stay uh, fairly thick today. There is a little bit of a wind chill in spots. The wind isn't all that strong, but it does feel like it's in the 30s in a few places, so just a heads up there. Here's the forecast for the rest of today. We stay in the mid-40s. There is a small chance that we could start to see a few very light showers, maybe some drizzle overnight. Won't amount to much, but it could make for a damp start to your Saturday. If you have plans Saturday morning, maybe you've got a soccer match or whatever, just know it's going to be cold or cool, and it could be a little bit damp out there, maybe some fog developing as well. Here's a look at the time lapse, and you can kind of see the clouds coming in overnight. This is around 4 a.m., and then as we got into today, there are the cloudy skies. 35, it's not 35 right now, it's uh, near 40, as I mentioned. And temperatures, again, stay on the cool side. As we look at the dew points, this really does tell the story uh, pretty well. Uh, we are going to be pretty dry today, but that moisture shoots up tonight. We've got moisture through the weekend until about Sunday afternoon. Then behind a cold front, it drops off again. So we get a couple dry days Monday and Tuesday. Then the moisture builds right back up Wednesday into Thursday. And the good news here is I do think we'll see some actual rainfall maybe by the end of next week. So there's something to look forward to. Again, there's a satellite picture. You see the clouds working north through the state of Texas. Rest of the country, a little bit of active weather up across the northwest, and then a big storm system that's still hanging on here across the northeast. Snow finally coming to an end in Boston, but not before they picked up a ton of snow, and uh, there's still some travel issues there. New York City is still seeing a few light flurries, but this is mainly just lake effect snow here on the backside of this system. So uh, there will be some issues across the northeast. We're not seeing wintry weather, just again some light showers 
maybe some fog tomorrow morning, maybe some drizzle. And then tomorrow afternoon, I do think we'll get some thunderstorms to develop probably east of our viewing area, east of LaGrange, maybe towards the Houston area. And they could actually see a few strong storms in that direction. There's a marginal risk, a small risk for some severe weather. That does not include San Antonio. We'll probably just see some of that light morning stuff. Rain chances this week, 30% with the drizzle and then I mentioned Thursday there's our next chance and I think we could actually see some accumulating rainfall which would be nice uh, that'll be late middle part late next week 64 tomorrow with that uh, cloudy sky 30 percent chance of some showers especially early 72 Sunday front comes through turns breezy and cooler yet again 60 Monday 60 on Tuesday and there you see more clouds and that chance of rain showing up on Thursday guys we need rain to knock this mountain cedar out of the air. I agree with that. Could we please? Yes. All right, so we got Doug McDermott still in Detroit. We got some mm -hmm. guys left in Boston, and we got the rest of the team in Philadelphia getting ready to play the Sixers. This is getting wacky. And you know, this is me on my phone today. Refresh <laughs> Spurs PR, Spurs PR, just to see if any other yeah. players are going to be placed on the health and safety protocols list. And as Sears was saying, I mean, they're going to be shorthand tonight. I don't even know who's going to be in the starting lineup outside of Jakob Pertl, I guess, <laughs> and DeJounte says he was thrilled to come back the other night and help the team break that losing streak coming up. The final play, uh, uh, smoked the layup. Got a good steal going against the clock. His blue layup. Boston's Jalen Brown missed a ga gimme while the Spurs' Ajante Murray was defending him. What a great play in big board sports. Spurs starting five will look a bit different tonight when they face the Philadelphia 76ers. That's because starters Derek White, Kelvin Johnson, and Devin Vassell, along with reserve Thaddeus Young, were added to the health and safety protocols list. They are listed as out by the Spurs and will join starter Doug McDermott, who remains sidelined in the league's health and safety protocols. Lonnie Walker IV is listed as questionable as he remains in the league's return to competition reconditioning status. Now to help add bodies to the roster while going through their biggest COVID outbreak this season, the Spurs signed two players to 10-day contracts under the NBA's COVID-related hardship exception. Guard Tyler Johnson and forward Anthony Lamb. After missing five games in a row in the league's health and safety protocols, Ajante Murray returned to action Wednesday night to lead the Spurs to victory against the Celtics. The win broke a four-game losing streak and scored the Spurs' first win during their seven-game road trip. Murray led the Spurs at 22 points in 32 minutes in the 99-97 victory of Boston. He's glad to be back after watching the Spurs go one and five during his absence. I'm confident, like I always been telling you. Uh, you know, I'm a confident guy. I've been in the gym, so I've been doing more conditioning than all the other stuff because I knew that was going to be the biggest problem. Uh, so, you know, I feel good, but I'm I'm more, you know, happy for the win. You know, I got to watch my team, and that was tough. And just seeing us need that leadership and everything, we losing games, and you know, it was tough on everybody. You know. Uh, but at the end of the day, we, we came and fought versus a really young, good team. And well. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich reached another milestone in his career at Boston, becoming the first to coach 2,000 NBA games with one team. He was asked about it prior to tip-off in Boston, and Spurs fans already know his response. It means I'm old. Been in the same place for a long time. Had really good players, blah, 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 you know. Blah, blah, blah. The Sixers of under Safai Street will host the Spurs night at six at the Wells Fargo Arena. Had a wild finish at Madison Square Garden last night between the Celtics and Knicks. Jason Tatum splashes one down, tying the game at 105 with one and a half seconds to go. This after Boston blew a 23-point lead. Knicks answer right back. Inbound pass will go to R.J. Barrett, and he banks a game-winning three-pointer as time expires for the win, and the Garden is going nuts. The Knicks take it one away to 105. This was also the fourth time Boston is giving up a comeback of at least 19 points and lost the game this season. That is crazy. And how about this? Today is National Bobblehead Day, observed every year on January 7th. According to NationalDayCalendar.com, the spring connected figurines with oversized heads go back more than a century. They were developed in Germany with their introduction to the U.S. coming in the 1950s and 60s. But their most recent resurgence started in the 1990s with sports teams using them as promotional items. And David, did you know this? 
The National Bobblehead Hall of Fame and Museum is located in Milwaukee, wow. Wisconsin. And I already know that Ursula knew that. That's why I asked you. Oh, really? Yeah. Do they have I, like do have, I do have a bobblehead collection. I have one too, yeah. You have a bobblehead collection? Do they have sports caster bobbleheads? Do you and Greg have like a bobblehead? Uh, well, I mean, you Greg's can, a walking bobblehead, so. You can get your own bobblehead I love you, Greg. Made. <laughs> Did you know that? I did know that, yes. I'm going to get one made of you now. <laughs> a toddler's costume has been making the rounds online. I'm telling Greg. And now it's gotten the attention of the royal family, what they had to say about this pint-sized queen. And new today at 5, check your mattress label. Some mattresses can be giving you a lot more than good night's rest. We're talking toxic chemical exposure. It's called off gassing, and it goes beyond smelling weird. Coming up today at 5, Marilyn Morris explains what to look for on the label for a chemical-free sleep. Some sad news to report Hollywood has lost another star. Academy Award winning actor Sidney Poitier has died at the age of 94 years old. He died in Bahamas yesterday. That's according to the acting director general of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the Bahamas. During his career, Poitier became the first black actor to win an Academy Award for best lead performance in Lilies of the Field and he was the first to be a top box office draw. His groundbreaking movie career considered pivotal to the civil rights movement. Kazakhstan's president has authorized security forces to shoot to kill protesters whom he called terrorists. This comes as anti-government protests turned violent, escalated. ABC's Ian Panel has more. Kazakhstan is the ninth largest country in the world, a major oil producing nation, but right now it's in a state of turmoil. America and other countries are trying to urge a peaceful settlement to the clashes, but today the opposite is happening, with the country's president now warning his troops will shoot to kill protesters without warning. Overnight, more violence and deadly clashes between anti-government protesters and security forces in Kazakhstan. The authoritarian regime using live fire, as have some protesters. At least 25 demonstrators and 18 service personnel killed. Most of the violence taking place in the Central Asian country's largest city, Almaty. What began as peaceful protests over a doubling in gas prices rapidly escalating. Anti-government protesters setting the mayor's office ablaze. The presidential residence also attacked. Burned out vehicles, shattered windows and fire damage, a testament to the ferocity of the clashes. Now, Russian airborne units on the ground after a plea for help from Kazakhstan's president. Other ex-Soviet nations also sending troops amid fears the death toll will rise. The Kazakh government claiming that the situation on the ground is now stabilizing despite the heavy clashes. The response from the Biden administration has been fairly muted. And there's a real dilemma for U.S. foreign policy after the Capitol Hill insurrection. Do you support protesters even though some have used violence? Or do you sit back and allow strong men like Vladimir Putin to use force to put down genuine calls for political change? Ian Panel, ABC News, London. A growing number of U.S. school districts moving back to online classes because of the winter surge in COVID-19 cases in Detroit. The shift involves 50,000 students. Meanwhile, in Chicago, classes at most schools were canceled for a third consecutive day. Families in the nation's largest, rather third largest district were told last night that classes would be canceled today. The Chicago Teachers Union wants remote learning until there's an agreement or the latest COVID-19 surge subsides. But district leaders say remote instruction was devastating for children and their well-being. Both sides have been negotiating a pandemic safety plan, including more standards for testing and metrics that could trigger school closures. A second COVID-19 booster shot could soon be available to some West Virginia residents. Governor Jim Justice sent a letter to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention requesting permission for the fourth dose. He says he is following protocol from Israel. A study there found a fourth dose of the Pfizer vaccine can raise antibodies fivefold a week after getting it. Israel has authorized a fourth dose for health care workers and residents 60 and older. Justice wants the shot for essential workers and people 50 and older, starting four months after they received boosters. 
He says many of them were the first to be vaccinated and are now approaching that time. New data showing unemployment fell in December, but job growth did not reach economics for economists forecasts. According to the Labor Department, unemployment dropped to 3.9 percent, a new pandemic era low. But the economy only added 199,000 jobs. That's half of what the economists predicted and the fewest jobs added in any month of 2021. America added 6.4 million jobs last year. That is the most since 1939. Outside with live camp, boy, we enjoyed those blue skies and I don't know, some decent temperatures. And now look, look what we get. After that wind blew all this stuff in yesterday, blew clouds A long in. ago memory now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it blew in some mountain cedar, yeah. blew in the cold air, and now we've got uh, moisture trying to move back in, and we've got some cloud cover that's moved in from the south, and this is going to make for a, a chilly day. We look across the country. There was a, an area of cold air that has worked across the, the Midwest. It's negative six right now in Minneapolis, uh, 10 in Chicago, 16 in St. Louis. So. We're feeling some of that, but not the brunt of it. You got to go down into Florida where we seem to sound like a broken record here, but that's where all the warmth is. It's 82 right now in Miami, the warm spot across the country. As we zoom in here on Texas, a lot of 40s. It's still even 30 right now, Wichita Falls. You go out west, there is some warmer air, 63 up in the mountains around Marfa, 55 right now in El Paso. There is the cloud cover that's streaming north. There have been some breaks out west. Del Rio has been looking at some sun. So as a result, warmer numbers there. It's 54, but most everyone else now in the 40s, even a few 30s in the hill country, 39 in Fredericksburg. It's 40 here in town. We'll see those numbers rise a little bit more probably into the mid 40s later today. So here's what to expect. Cloudy and cold. Tonight, drizzle and fog will develop by tomorrow morning, so it'll be a bit of a damp start to your Saturday. Cloudy still, but a little bit warmer as temperatures make their way up into the 60s. Here's our forecast today. Pretty steady temperatures, I think, once we get into the late afternoon and evening hours, we'll start to bring in some very small rain chances. Anything we see is going to be very, very light, but there is potential for some of that drizzle and fog tomorrow morning, guys. So tomorrow night, the Cowboys are playing live right here on KSET 12. They'll be dealing with the Eagles, COVID, and playoff seating tomorrow night. Larry's going to break it all down for us coming up in sports. A scientific study involved testing a goldfish's driving skills. This is real, y'all. We're going to take a look at the results after the break. Seriously? This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. The New York Times acquiring The Athletic for $550 million. Their subscription-based sports company had been losing money over the last two years. That after they raised $140 million the first six years they existed. The company's co-founders are expected to remain leading The Athletic, while The Times inches closer to their goal of reaching $10 million total subscriptions. Meanwhile, Apple CEO Tim Cook rewardedly made some pretty big bucks while serving as the leader of the tech giant. He earned $98.7 million in total compensation last year alone. That figure almost six times the amount of Cook's pay from the year prior, that according to an SEC filing on Thursday. Now, majority of last year's payment stems from stock awards, which saw a very successful year for Apple. They recently reached the $3 trillion market value threshold just a few days ago. And former President Donald Trump's SPAC Digital World Acquisition Corp was popping Thursday, that after his social media app set a target date for its launch day, True Social indicated to the Apple App Store that they intend to launch on February the 24th. First, that's on President's Day. The app now available for pre-order on the App Store as we speak is being pitched as an alternative to social media stalwarts like Twitter and Facebook. And that's Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. We always want to stay on top of scientific advances, so <laughs> stay tuned. A study asking the age-old question can a goldfish drive? Here's Jeremy's Jeremy Roth with the answer that just might surprise you. 
What if a goldfish could drive? No, it's not the title of a happy-go-lucky children's book. It was the basis of a study conducted by scientists in Israel. Researchers at the Ben-Gurion University of the Negev attached a camera to a water tank with a goldfish inside and an onboard computer capable of translating the fish's movements. They then repeatedly challenged the goldfish to navigate to a target on the opposite wall. After training, the goldfish repeatedly hit its mark, even when scientists attempted to fool it with false targets. Researchers say conclusions suggest fish have the cognitive ability to learn complex tasks and that navigational ability is universal. But then again, take a look at this shocking driving incident in Michigan where a vehicle crashed through a restaurant entrance and into customer Marnesia Bracey. I heard a boom and then stuff was just falling on top of me. The vehicle's occupants are seen arguing in the parking lot before fleeing the scene. Police say they have since been arrested. As for Bracey, she is dealing with injuries, but says she feels lucky. I'm still in shock. I can't believe that was me. I'm truly blessed. I'm so happy to be here. How about we steer away from the bad driving to some good news? A Kentucky toddler who went viral dressed as the queen for Halloween has gotten royal approval from Her Majesty herself. The girl's mother sent the photo to Windsor Castle and got a response from lady-in-waiting Mary Morrison saying the outfit was splendid and the queen was pleased. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. I still want to know more about the driving goldfish. Yeah, I, I, I didn't quite get it. How do you repeatedly challenge a goldfish? Well, you probably give it a treat, like I, a dog. What, what kind of treat do you give a goldfish to get it to swim where you're Fish looking? food. You move, you move the target, but you know, I'm What's still... What's the target? Well, it was like a line on the wall, I think, but I'm still <laughs> trying to kind of figure out what... What's the end game? Like, what did we get from this? <laughs> I guess maybe... We, they gleaned you know. something, I'm sure. Uber might need some new drivers. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 40 so far today. The high temperature, 32 was low this morning. So we did touch freezing. That's below average. The records are 86 and 14 set back in 1923 and 1886. Uh, we're going to talk about your weekend forecast. we got some chances of rain in the seven-day, too. It's coming up. So I've got the, the pharmacy on speed dial now. I've got my allergist ready to go. <laughs> well, this is this is really. Did you get some stuff for today? This I did. It's like an yesterday. emergency, you know. It's like, like can can this be over soon? Uh, I'm with you. I feel like this happened at the end of 2022. We were dealing with COVID and we're dealing with mountain cedar at the same time. It's just not a good combination, right? So, uh, you know, mountain cedar season typically winds down. We say around Valentine's Day, and the numbers are still high right now. So this is just uh, what we're dealing with at this time. We're also dealing with drought. Uh, you know, the numbers came in this morning, and we jumped up. 67% of the state was in drought last week. Now 80% of the state is in drought. You start to see this red color show up in places like the Panhandle, West Texas, uh, the Big Bend region. That's extreme drought. It can only go one step higher, and that's extreme. So we're getting into sort of bad territory here. And I'll zoom in on our area and notice we're seeing extreme starting to show up there just west of Carrizo Springs and uh, just to the uh, east of Eagle Pass. So not what we want to see. Maverick County sort of in the crosshairs there. And notice, too, that while San Antonio is not in a drought, yellow does not represent a drought. It just means that it's getting there. We're in the dry territory. I think we may jump into drop next week unless we can get some rain. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. There is some in the forecast. We look at the next seven days. There's a chance tomorrow morning, but I don't think it's going to amount to much. It'll be light drizzly type stuff. As we get into Thursday of next week, we could actually see some accumulating rainfall and that would go a long way to helping us. We'll see how that plays out. But right now we have a 30% chance of rain on Thursday. Outside, cloudy skies. Temperatures at 40 degrees at the airport, 44 stints and 41 Kelly, 39 at Randolph. It's a it's a chilly day. Thankfully, there's not a lot of wind out there. So we did have wind chills earlier. Not so much anymore because those winds have calmed down some. As we look at the satellite picture, you can see this bank of clouds. It's moving north. There have been some breaks. It's thinning just a little bit out to the west. So it's conceivable in places like Uvalde, Eagle Pass, Del Rio, Rock Springs. You can see a little bit of sun today. Del Rio is actually seen quite a bit. And that really has helped temperatures there, 54 degrees. But everyone else is in the 40s, 43 Gonzales, 44 Victoria, 43 right now in Katua. And as we look at the forecast temperatures, we'll probably stay in the 40s today. Out west, it could get close to 60 in Del Rio. 
And as we go into tonight uh, into early tomorrow morning, I think temperatures actually come up a little bit. We get some moisture coming in here and that may actually allow us to jump into the upper 40s and eventually we'll get up into the 60s. I think tomorrow the dew point forecast that moisture does increase. So we've got some really dry air in place at the surface right now. It jumps up that dew point into the 50s by tomorrow morning. And once the temperature and the dew point get a little bit closer together, some fog and some drizzle will be possible. So let's look at the future cast here. And this model does show some of those late showers, drizzly type stuff developing after 10 o'clock tonight and then some fog tomorrow morning. Now by tomorrow afternoon, we could see a few breaks in the clouds and I think any of the rain that we've been seeing will move east. There could actually be some thunderstorms out towards the Houston area, a couple strong storms. There's a marginal risk for that along I-10 and points east, but not here. Looks like things will stay pretty quiet tomorrow afternoon. If you're planning out your weekend, here's what you can expect. 64, morning fog and drizzle, light shower or two. Then on Sunday, we'll see more sun. 72, it's a little warmer, but it turns breezy and cooler, especially by the afternoon after a front blows through. 60 on Monday, 60 Tuesday. And then I mentioned that chance of rain late next week. We'll keep our fingers crossed for that. We do need the rain, guys. Desperately, thank you. Mm -hmm. Cowboys offense needs some work, but their defense may be without a couple of guys tomorrow night as well. Huh? And you know, the Eagles probably don't want to see Trayvon Diggs in three career games against them. Diggs has four interceptions, one in each game, so two in another. But Trayvon Diggs is listed as questionable for tomorrow's matchup against the Eagles. And two area quarterbacks are getting ready for another season at the college level. Coming up. We had two more players test positive, uh, Tyron Smith and um, Anthony Brown. More bad news delivered by Mike McCarthy yesterday announcing Tyron Smith and Anthony Brown are out tomorrow due to COVID-19 in big board sports. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. When it comes to dealing with COVID, the Cowboys are not as bad off as the Eagles who placed 12 players on the reserve COVID-19 list on Monday. A Cowboys star cornerback Trayvon Diggs is listed as questionable due to illness as a safety Donovan Wilson. Both guys tested negative for COVID-19. Now running back Tony Pollard, foot and safety Jerron Curse, hamstring also are questionable. Now there was some talk this week that linebacker Micah Parsons, who was placed on the COVID list earlier this week, might be able to go tomorrow. But Coach McCarthy said that's not going to happen. No, Micah will not play in the game. Uh, that, that's clear. He, he will not make the trip to, to Philadelphia. And obviously, you know, I think, you know, the impact that he's he's made is is very evident. Uh, but, you know, like anything, this is this is opportunities for others. And, you know, I, I know, you know, our guys, you know, once once the 48 is declared, um, you know, they'll be ready to go. And, and you know, like anything, this league, it's all about opportunities. And um, so, you know, we'll we'll go to whatever direction we need to go. And the Houston Texans will host the Tennessee Titans Sunday at noon. Tennessee is playing for the number one seed in the AFC, while the Texans are playing for another chance to improve as a team. It's just another opportunity to go out there and um, get better, have a chance to perform better than we have in any other uh, week previous. So we're excited for it and we're ready to um, take on another division, divisional opponent, opponent that has a chance to be ranked uh, or seeded pretty high in the AFC. So. We're going to try to go out there and do our best to stop them. Well, this week, we caught up with quarterbacks Cannon Williams and Lucas Coley while they are training with QB coach Yelvinoy. Cannon comes from Harlan High School and currently plays for Incarnate Word. Cardinals quarterback Cameron Ward has entered the transfer portal, and head coach Eric Morris left to become offensive coordinator at Washington State. So, G.J. Kinney was named the Cards head coach, and the redshirt Cannon hopes to become his starting quarterback. My quarterback coach this year, Coach Leftwich, um, he was going up to Washington State with Coach Morris, but he decided to come back and stay as the offensive coordinator. So I'm keeping my offensive coordinator, but with a new head coach, you know, it's like a, a fresh start. You know, practice, practice is going to be different every day, the schedule different, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's really a blank slate for me. Lucas played his senior season at Cornerstone Christian before leaving for the Arkansas Razorbacks. He decided to redshirt his freshman campaign and make some money via the name, image, and likeness rights. NIL has offered, you know, a bunch of blessings to college athletes all over the world. People with like big platforms on social media and be able to profit off of them. And for for me personally, you know, my best one right now is JJ's Grill. It's a it's a restaurant down there in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and. You know, they're taking care of me, I'm taking care of them, and that's a family up there. 
And that's it for sports, guys. All right, Larry, thank you very much. And we want to bring you an update. Um, Lena Keel, the little girl who's been missing since December 20th. There was an Amber Alert that was issued, but we'd just been notified by the Texas Department of Public Safety that uh, it is now discontinued. Don't know why they discontinued it, but they just, uh, they just let us know that it has been discontinued. So. All right, we'll try to have some more details for you later in our newscast or on KSAT 12 News at 5 tonight. In the meantime, let's get downtown. Mike and Fiona, I'm sure they got something exciting. Uh, is that something warm today? Oh, yes. Food, <laughs> food, and more Glorious food. Glorious food. It's a foodie Friday. Yes, indeed. And Leticia Cantu from El Pollo King is here. And what is Fiona making in that pan right there? Fiona is making the Vivia Quesadillas, our world famous quesadillas. One of the great dishes there. And it's the pandemic and y'all are hurting, right? You need people to come in and eat this good food. Yes, it's been really rough these last couple of months and, and we need your help, San Antonio. We need folks to come in and, and help us out. Um, the last thing that small businesses want to do is have to close down um, because of this pandemic. Well, look right. at all that you can try right there. That'll give you a full belly. Speaking of full belly, we're going to be checking in with Jen a little bit later on about getting a full belly. Oh, yes. They call themselves the premier breakfast and brunch spot in the city, and she will dive into that. Okay. Hey, you like waffles? You like chicken? What the waffle? I tell you, boy, we are going to be eating some really good waffles <laughs> out there, and it's waffles on a stick. Look at that, with a little bit of chicken mixed in there. And their kids help them come up with some of these recipes with the waffles, so yeah. it's gonna get crazy. It's, uh, they've got <laughs> Crazy one, good. Yeah, real good flavors. All that and a lot more on this Friday. Stick around.